Hello, I'm James Lee Chobe, the Poet Laureate of Davis, California, here to present a selection of poems by the great poet Kenneth Patchen. Kenneth Patchen was born in 1911 and died in 1972, so uh, actually he was a little younger than I am now when he passed away. He mixed drawing, painting, and jazz with his poetry. He was one of the first poets to mix jazz with poetry. It was an inspiration to the beat poets that followed him. Um, Google, if you will, Kenneth, Cat, Kenneth Patchen, P-A-T-C-H-E-N, Kenneth Patchen, comma, picture poems uh, for some interesting things to look at. His work incorporates a little bit of fable and mythology and compassionate wonder, especially in his love poems, which are incredibly moving and touching and very passionate. Uh, he was influential in the San Francisco Renaissance of the 40s and the beat poets of the 50s, and knew many of them. He had a um, very close friendship with Kenneth Rexroth. Uh, Kenneth Patchen had a back injury in his 1920s that was re-injured a couple of times and had a bad surgery, uh, too. And uh, By the end of his life, he'd had many surgeries, and the injury to his back troubled him the rest of his life. Kenneth Patchen was a pacifist, strongly uh, opposing uh, violence and U.S. involvement in World War II. And I'm going to read a couple of poems from some each of his early books, um, starting in 1936 with the collection Before the Brave. This is a poem, he titled some of his poems, some of them he just used the first line for a title, uh, which is something I've sort of copied. I do that too. This is, Let Us Have Madness Openly. Let Us Have Madness Openly by Kenneth Patchen. Let us have madness openly, O men of my generation. Let us follow the footsteps of this slaughtered age. See it trail across time's dim land into the closed house of eternity with the noise that dying has, with the face that dead things wear, nor ever say we wanted more. We look to find an open door, an utter deed of love, transforming day's evil darkness, but we found extended hell and fog upon the earth and within the head a rotting bog of huge, lean graves. Some very incredible images there. From the same collection, Before the Brave. Among ourselves and with all nations. Chiefly, I prize this loss of patience. Deep in riot days around us, these swollen times propel the future forward. Tear alike, my friends, and turn about my foes. I think not every lesson is full of welcome. Weeds in suburban streets, stalking gangs who fire at sight, and ghosts marked with print of million moving feet. You guess the answer. Gather courage. Wash your linen on the wires of storm and song, advertising no shadow hope or unemployed regrets. Take care. These withered times prepare no Turkish bath of comradeship or endless singing in the square. The fight goes on, goes out, goes in. We cannot loiter, though legions repeat the final word of the final orator. This time is wrong. The fact is law, not tactical. In 1939, a collection came out called First Will and Testament. We often use the expression Last Will and Testament. From First Will and Testament, this is dedicated, uh, this poem, as many are, to his wife Miriam, who he loved very deeply, as throbbing, thro as throffing wounds of roses. As throffing wounds of roses harry summer over a wintry sea, 
so does thy very strangeness bring me ever nearer thee, as the cry of the bird-torn wind hastens the heart beyond its usual need. So shalt thy dear loveliness upon the forlorn unrest of my cold will be as that snowy stain the roses bleed, oh, as flaming wounds of roses merry summer to the most wintry sea. So does thy very woman's separateness bring me ever nearer thee. This is an untitled poem. Feeling chilled in that cold country and having no fuel at all to light a fire, this deliberate man assailed his own shell with flame. And as he stood there burning, shivering men passed, muttering, He's a great fool. But he answered them quietly, saying, I am warm now, and it shall never be again dark. Dying, he turned his face from death, and there were commemorative cities built and destroyed on the spot where the man himself had never stood. We're reading poems from the earlier part of the career of Kenneth Patchen. In 1942, as America was moved into World War II, Patchen released the collection From the Teeth of the Lion. This is called, this is titled For Miriam, his wife. Do I not deal with angels when her lips I touch? So gentle, so warm and sweet, Falsity has no sight of her. Oh, the world is a place of veils and roses when she is there. I am come to her wonder like a boy finding a star in a haymow. And there is nothing cruel or mad or evil anywhere. This is Kabili Ituri. Kabili Dash Ituri. I told her that my mother would make a bed and supper for us, but it was already dark and I had lost the way. Mother will give us food and coffee and we shall sleep in my old room. The moon will stand at the window and we shall be as children again, I said. But I had lost the way and it was already dark in the forest. Mother will cry a bit because she's old and, Does your mother speak English, she said? As well as a book, I told her rubbing my sleeve over my nose, which had started to bleed. And your father wears shoes? Oh, of course he does. Uh, my brother can drive a car, and my sister is noted for her beauty. We had by now reached the bank of a swollen river, and I told her to undress, and we started across. But the water was full of tiny horses that snapped at our ankles with long pointed teeth. So we swam back, and we stretched out under a giant tree. Does your mother dye her hair? she asked. Slipping into her panties. How should I know, I said, beginning to shiver. I took her coat and slipped it over her shoulders. Where did you say your mother was born? She was born into a gentle house that sat high on a hill overlooking a valley. I put out my hand to her and touched something that felt like thick water. Striking a match, I saw a fat man with a little round black hole in his head. He had been grinning happily when he died. In, a large dog sat at his feet. He held a box in his left hand from which spilled a number of picture postcards. Big drops of water were hitting down through the leaves. It's raining, I said opening our lunch box and taking out a bacon tomato sandwich. How long has your mother had those dizzy spells? She will put the supper all out on the table and after we've eaten we'll climb the stairs up to my old room and it will be like, say it's beginning to rain, 
she said, pushing over near and trying to snuggle under her coat. I shoved her off and she got up and went away crashing through the trees. I called after her once softly, but she did not answer, so I caught, caught up and ran along at her side until we came to a little town. Lights were on in all the houses, and people were singing, and there was the sound of children laughing at games. I knocked at a door, and my mother opened it. She smiled when she saw me, and I stretched out my arms to her, but she turned quickly, and the house grew dark. Then one by one the lights in all that village went out, and we stood in the cold rain, while somewhere a little way off the rumble of heavy guns shook the ground. Kenneth Patchen. He had uh, also in the same year a collection come out called From the Dark Kingdom. Called The Dark Kingdom. This is From the Dark Kingdom. So this is 1942. Another poem from Miriam. The sea is awash with roses, oh, they blow upon the land. The still hills fill with their scent, oh, the hills flow on their sweetness as on God's hand. Oh, love, it is so little we know of pleasure, pleasure that lasts as the snow. But the sea is awash with roses, oh, they blow upon the land. And this is uh, called a temple, a temple. To leave the earth was my wish, and no will stayed my rising. Early before sun had filled the roads with carts, conveying folk to weddings and to murders, before men left their selves of sleep to wander in the dark of the world like whipped beasts, I took no pack, I had no horse, no staff, no gun. I got up a little way, and something called me, saying, Put your hand in mind. We will seek God together. And I answered, It is your father who's lost, not mine. Then the sky filled with tears of blood, and snakes sang. And we're going to move along to 1943, the collection of poems, Cloth of the Tempest, Cloth of the Tempest. This poem is called Cruelties of the Sportive Power, not supportive, but sportive, like one who sports. Cruelties of Sportive Power. Loved in the black weather, the will, life's K will, the will of life, sea, joy, bird, queen, flame, beast, stain, the will of life, stain on the golden throat, and life's wit on the mountain, my chair, my tree, my lady, and the will and the wit of the flaming bird, and the way and the wiles, of the sea queen, not sea queen, or sea queen child, and the word and the warmth of life's golden wakening. My tongue had cried, juice great and small of life, chair, star tree, my sound lady, all in the golden weather of my love, near the beast, please be wandering, taste of flame in my mouth, green brain of his being, deeper to holy, like an iron bull in a cloud. This is a very brief one. This is called November in Ohio. Kenneth Patchen was born in Ohio. Although he spent most of his time living as an adult in either New York or California. November in Ohio. There were twelve ragged children in the house. The sleigh tinkled snowily down the street, and they all looked out the window at it. And I'm going to finish with 
with two poems from 1946, the book Pictures of Life and Death. And this first one is called For Miriam, and both of these poems are actually for Miriam. Uh, he wrote many very tender love poems for his wife. And indeed, they fell in love corresponding in him writing love poems and mailing them to her. For Miriam, oh my dearest, while the sun still spends its fabulous money for the kingdoms in the eye of a fool, let us continue to waste our lives declaring beauty to the world, and let us continue to praise truth and justice through the eyes of the stars turn black and the smoking juice of the universe and the ruptured brain of God pours down upon us in final consecration. And this is, I want her eyes to fill with wonder. And this poem is, pardon me while I coffee up, This poem is, to me, one of the most beautiful love poems I've ever known. And I've read it at readings where everyone was supposed to bring love poems, and I've read it at readings uh, where we were all supposed to bring sensual poems, because I think this both. And uh, I've read it at poetry readings just to shine my reading up a little, because it's such a damn fine poem. I Want Her Eyes to Fill with Wonder by Kenneth Patchen. I'd want her eyes to fill with wonder. I'd want her lips to open just a little. I'd want her breasts to lift at my touch. And oh, I'd tell her that I loved her. I'd say that the world began and ended where she was. Oh, I'd swear that the beautiful wept to see her naked loveliness. I'd want her thighs to put birds in my fingers. I'd want her belly to be as soft and warm as a sleeping kitten's. I'd want her sex to meet mine as flames kissing in a dream forest. And oh, I'd tell her that I love her. I'd say all the noblest things of earth and heaven were made more noble because she lived. And oh, I'd know that the prettiest angels knelt there as she lay asleep in my arms. Kenneth Patchen, I've been reading from his collected poems, which have excerpts from many of his books. He also wrote a novel, and he also wrote some, uh, a couple of creative books that were uh, experimental, let's say, experimental prose. Uh, again, I encourage you to Google Kenneth Pat Patchen's picture poems. They are unique. It's hard to describe them. You really need to see for yourself. This mixes image with words. Uh, and it's just outstanding work. that was far, far ahead of its time. So uh, I want to thank you for joining me. The next Friday, I will post another reading for you. I'm not sure now what it will be. Uh, we're really stretching my library here, and we'll continue to do so. Thank you so much.